God in Christ has revealed his glory. Come, let us worship. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the Lord's name is greatly to be praised. Give him praise, you servants of the Lord. O oh, praise the name of the Lord. Welcome to our worship today as we praise God's holy name. My name is Reverend Nick here in St. Thomas's. I'm delighted to welcome you here, wherever you are, as God's Holy Spirit unites us. You'll find all the words you need for our worship will be on the screen, and I hope you'll feel able to join in. And when we sing, to sing as enthusiastically as your neighbours will put up with. In today's Gospel reading, and giving the theme to our service, we'll hear of how Jesus transformed water into wine at the wedding in Cana. And we pray that God will transform our lives with the same spirit, the same love that Jesus showed then. So before we continue in worship, let's be still and perhaps look back on the week that's ending, ahead to what we know is coming, and remind ourselves that God is already present with us. Let's pray. God of our days and years, we set this time apart for you. Form us in the likeness of Christ, so that our lives may glorify you. Amen. We use a, a response as we open ourselves to God's Spirit. We come this day welcoming God as people who need your sure, wide-reaching love. We say together, with you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. We gather this day, water-changing God, as people looking for your Spirit's renewal in our lives. With you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. We worship this day, generous, giving God, as people who name Jesus as our Lord. With you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. Now we sing God's praise in a traditional Epiphany hymn, Songs of Thankfulness and Praise.
into God's presence, we know that we need his forgiveness as part of the transformation that he brings us. In a moment, we'll pause in silence to look into our hearts and lives and ask God's forgiveness where we need it. For by the mercies of God, let's confess our sins and present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to him, which is our spiritual worship. In silence, we open ourselves to the searching light of God's holiness. Lord Jesus, illuminate the darkness in our hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, open our eyes to your saving love. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, unstop our ears to hear your living word. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive you your sins and make you holy to serve him in the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now forgiven by God, we respond by joyfully singing his praise. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father. Your Son proclaimed good news to the poor, release to the captives and freedom to the oppressed, anoint us with your Holy Spirit, and set all your people free to praise you in Christ our Lord. Amen. Now let's hear our first Bible reading. Genesis chapter 14, verses 17 to 20. After his return from the defeat of Kedorlaomer and the kings who were with him, the king of Sodom went out to meet him at the valley of Sheba, that is, the king's valley. And King Melchizedek of Salem brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God Most High. He blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram by God Most High, maker of heaven and earth. And blessed be God most high, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And Abraham gave him one tenth of everything. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our hearts and souls thirst for God. And so before we hear our gospel reading of how God answers that thirst, we'll sing a song based on one of the Psalms, as the deer pants for the water. Thank you. 
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding twenty or thirty gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs, in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Lord, transform our lives. You transform the water at that wedding. Fill us with your joy. Overflow in love to those around us. Amen. I love that story of Jesus and I've preached on it many times over the years. This year feels a bit different because this year the first thing that strikes me about it is the amazing idea of a wedding reception. Remember them? People celebrating together over food and wine. When we can eventually get back together safely again, let's never again take those things for granted. For now, it's right that we stay at home, keep our distance and all those things, wear the masks, sanitize our hands, what we need to do. Because in Wolverhampton just now, the virus is widespread and deadly, and our hospital is under immense pressure. So we need to do our part, at the same time as calling on the government to do theirs. But we mustn't forget that what we are for the time being giving up is something which is, in the long run, part of being fully human. Getting together, sharing food and drink, celebrating the great milestones of life. These things matter. They make us human. And we mourn them for now. Those things matter so much that it was to keep a wedding reception from going wrong that Jesus did what St. John calls the first of the signs of his glory. Nothing particularly holy. Not healing someone who was close to death. Not stilling a storm that was putting his disciples in danger but overstocking the bar to protect a young married couple from embarrassment and shame, to keep the party going and to bless it. Because God cares about ordinary lives and he cares about ordinary as well as extraordinary things. Those things matter to God because they matter to us and we matter to him. And as so often in John's Gospel, as well as a straightforward story of Jesus miraculously saving a wedding reception, there's more meaning here. The fact there's so much wine and such good wine is a nod to the fact that 
One of the pictures of the future that we get time after time through the Bible is of a great wedding feast. As God and his people, heaven and earth, Jesus and his church are joined together at the end of time and we celebrate. The prophet Isaiah wrote about tables bending under the platters of rich food, of the overflowing jugs of vintage wine, and no need to exercise afterwards to burn off the calories. I mean, he didn't spell that bit out, but I'm sure it's part of the picture. He wrote of a great, overabundant celebration. And John tells us in this story that that great heavenly party is where we're headed, but that at the same time, we don't have to wait until we get to heaven to let the celebration begin. In and through Jesus' life, the kingdom of God is here and now. The party can start. Life is to be celebrated, even in the middle of all of the mess. Life is different because of Jesus and what he's done. Now to understand how that change affects us, how life and how we relate to God are different because of Jesus, we can look at a bit of background to that miracle, some details about the water and the wine. John tells us there were six stone jars there full of water. Now why does it matter what they were made of? Well, John tells us that they were there for the Jewish rites of purification. Devout Jews, then as now, had very specific rules about washing hands before and during meals. Now we've got used to washing and sanitizing our hands much more than we used to. But this back then wasn't to stop the virus spreading. It was about a kind of spiritual hygiene, washing away anything that was considered ceremonially unclean. The world was full of things that kept you away from God. If you ate without washing your hands, then according to the rules, you'd become unclean. You couldn't go to the synagogue, you couldn't pray. God would not hear your prayers. You were cut off from the source of life. Now think how careful we've become to avoid catching the coronavirus from each other, from surfaces, from anything we touch. We wash our hands, we sanitize them, we're careful. Think how that's changed your life in this last year. And now imagine that your whole life was spent with a background anxiety, a background caution about picking up something invisible that would come somehow between you and God. Perhaps through sharing a spoon to serve yourself from a bowl. Or going in the house of someone of a different faith. Or just handling food that wasn't properly prepared. Imagine how that background anxiety would affect your life. How it would affect your relationship with God. Always on edge in case something goes wrong. Now at a wedding, with lots of guests and lots of food, people will be getting up and down constantly to wash their hands between courses. Every time they pass someone something, always careful not to risk spiritual contamination. And the jars were stone because stone was immune to becoming unclean itself. Metal surfaces, wooden implements, these things, if they were touched by someone who was unclean, became unclean themselves and would pass that on to the next person to touch them. Stone couldn't. Stone was safe. So these stone jars, holding about 150 gallons of water, were designed to hold water for keeping people ritually pure, clean, able to pray, making sure they didn't get accidentally infected by the world. And it was that water that Jesus turned into wine. The water that was there to keep people holy by washing away the unspiritual bits of life, 
became the wine that makes holy the celebration of all that is good in life. And it was good wine. Better than anything the groom could have afforded, better than anything they've tasted. And there's plenty for everyone, about a thousand bottles worth. At some party. Now I said that Jesus makes a difference to life and to how we relate to God. And part of it, a big part of it, is this. God doesn't want us to live in fear. With an idea of virtue, of holiness, as being about washing away all the ordinary bits of life to leave some pure religious core. But too many of us still live with an idea of God that drives a a nagging worry in the background, a fear of getting it wrong, even if we're not sure what the it we might get wrong is. Our lives shrink, affected more by anxiety about what wrong we mustn't do than by an excitement about what good we can do because of God's love. The good news, the good news that comes through Jesus, the gospel, is that God isn't watching us and waiting for us to get it wrong so he can get angry with us. He's inviting us to live bigger, freer, more abundant lives. Yes, it matters deeply that we live with love, honesty, humility, generosity, worship, all of those things. But that's about doing the right thing, living with the right heart, not about carefully avoiding life and all of its mess. Jesus has done what we couldn't to take care of the bits that we get wrong so that we can concentrate on enjoying and living with God the bits we get right. A bit later in John's Gospel, Jesus said that he came so that we could have life and have it to the full, abundant, overflowing life, more life, not less. Jesus loves to meet us in celebrating and enjoying what's good in life, not in fearfully avoiding all that's not. He calls us to live lives that are getting bigger rather than smaller, lives that spread celebration and encouragement, not fear and disapproval. For now, in this tough time, we're still deeply limited in how we can celebrate with others. We need to keep our distance for everyone's safety. But there's no barrier to our relationship with God except the ones that we put there. God doesn't want us to approach him from a place of fear or with a negative religion that's all about what's wrong with life. God invites us to live life more fully, even now, to find the places in life to rejoice, the moments in other people's lives to celebrate, the good to enjoy. That's part of living in God's kingdom, part of letting the water turn to wine. So this week, find ways to celebrate a positive faith. And remember that when it comes to life with God, there's far more wine in the jar than you're going to need. His love, his spirit won't run out. So enjoy them. Amen. And now we're going to sing a song which is new to us. It celebrates the wonderful God who turns water into wine.
Let's declare our faith in God, saying together, We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray. The response to our prayers this morning is when you hear, Lord of glory, will you respond, hear our prayer. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to God the Father. Lord, you transformed common water into wine. May our common lives share in you who are divine. As you, dear Lord, have taken our humanity, may we partake in your divinity. Today we hear how your Son revealed his true nature at a wedding at Cana. May we, the Bride of Christ, your Church, be open to him coming into our lives. May we be watchful to him touching us in the ordinariness of our lives so that he may change its water into the new wine of fullness and blessing. And as we partake in this new wine of his love and sins forgiven, may it flow through our lives forever as we walk with him until our journey in this life is over. Lord of glory, hear our prayer. We pray for those who've got married in this past year and for those who are hoping that their preparations will go ahead in this time of uncertainty. For all who are discovering a newness in their love for each other, we remember those who are saving to get married and for all who feel that they cannot afford to get to marry. At this time we remember those marriages that are running into difficulty and are finding it tough 
because they are having to spend more time together. For those running out of resources and those who feel betrayed in love and are now seeking a divorce. We give thanks for all who work to help others to find reconciliation when marriage becomes sour. Lord of glory, hear our prayer. We pray that your presence may transform our homes, that our homes may be centres of love, joy and peace. We pray for fam family, friends and loved ones, and all who have transformed our lives by their goodness. At this time we pray for all who live alone and may be feeling a sense of isolation in the current lockdown. We ask that you will be with them and give them the assurance that they are never alone. Teach us to be good neighbours and to watch out for those who may be suffering because of a lack of contact with family and friends. Lord of glory, hear our prayer. We pray for our health service as it faces a time of unprecedented challenge. At this time we bring before you the staff who work at New Cross who may be feeling overwhelmed and exhausted because of the increasing need. We ask that you will give them the strength and support that they need. We pray for an end to the pandemic and that the vaccines will be a way out. We give thanks for all who are working in our vaccination centres, both those who are being paid to be there and those who have volunteered to help with the campaign. We also pray for those who need our prayers, for those who are ill in body, mind or spirit, and we bring before you all who are on our pew sheet and on our prayer chain, that your healing hand may be upon them. Lord of glory, hear our prayer. We rejoice that the best is yet to come and give thanks for all who have changed into the glory of your kingdom. We pray for those who have died recently and we remember with fondness those who we see no more. Grant to them and all the faithful departed peace and the promise of eternal life. We also ask that you will comfort all who mourn their passing with the assurance that their loved ones are now in your safekeeping. Lord of glory, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, in you the Father makes us and all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your glory and in the renewal of our lives, make known your heavenly glory. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As Jesus taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Today, after church, we're going to try one of the things that we've been missing so much. After church coffee. At 10.30, give you a bit of time to get the kettle boiled then I'll be opening a, a zoom chat room and you're very welcome to join us I've circulated the details over the church whatsapp group and if you like those details you have to be very quick but my contact details are on the screen do get in touch and we'll get those details to you just to join us for a few minutes with a, a cup of tea to meet others and have a chat But now before we end this time of worship, we praise God. For now that we've been put right with God through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
He's brought us by faith into the grace of God. We rejoice in the hope of sharing God's glory. This hope does not deceive us. God has poured his love into our hearts by the gift of his Holy Spirit. Now we sing our last hymn this morning, Immortal Invisible. take God's transforming love into the rest of the week we pray together God of our pilgrimage you have led us to the living water refresh and sustain us as we go forward on our journey in the name of Jesus our Lord Amen now may God who in Christ gives us a spring of water welling up to eternal life perfecting you the image of his glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.